Hey everyone, and welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. In episode 7 of the How to Make a 3D Customization Menu in Unity series, I will show you how to make buttons that can be clicked on to customize our character. I will also show you how to bring our character from the menu scene to the game scene. With that said, let's begin. So this is how our menu looked in the previous video. As I said, at this stage here, we have finished our simple menu, since we can customize color and models. To demonstrate, however, the new techniques I will be showing you shortly, I have set up another scene. Inside of it, I have my character rig, with all his different models and his idle animation. Basically, the scene looks similar to how it was at the end of episode 4, except there is less UI. The only piece of user interface is this text that I simply called Head Presets. Under this text, we will place all our buttons. And talking about buttons, I'm going to create them right now. So taking a quick screenshot of each one of my heads, I open up Photoshop, create a new layer and draw the contour of my head. Grabbing my magic wand tool, I select the outside of my white underline. Select the layer with the screenshotted image and hit delete. I now end up with this rough little button that I'll simply import inside of my Unity project and place in a folder I'll call UI. Inside the import settings, I'll make sure the texture type is 2D and UI. Once that's done, I'll create an image UI drag and drop my head image and add a simple button component. Just repeat this process for all the other buttons. So up until now, I have showed you a very simple method of hiding and displaying models using the set active function. This is a great way to get a customization menu up and running and will work just fine for a small game with a limited amount of customization options to choose from. But say you make 20 heads the player can potentially customize his character with. The outliner can quickly get very bloated, and as a result, the game can take some serious hits on performance. That's why has Cheeky Breaky Stoolcore cleverly mentioned in the comments, we can just use Unity's Skinned Mesh Render component to swap models around making the game more performant and the outliner less messy. To do so, we are first of all going to create a new folder I'll call Heads, and inside of this folder, I will drag and drop all my head models, basically making prefabs out of them. I will then delete all heads in my outliner except one. I'll then create another folder called Scripts and make a new c -sharp script called Customize Heads, and as usual, open up inside of my scripting editor, Mono Develop. I'll start by creating a public variable of type Skinned Mesh Render. I'll simply call it Head. I'll then create an array of type Skinned Mesh Render and name it Heads. Just note that if you have made a 3D character that doesn't have a control rig, the type you will be using will simply be mesh render instead of skinned mesh render. Secondly, I'll make a public function called change head and pass in an int variable I'll just call head index. And so inside this new function, we will set our head variables shared mesh, which is basically the part in the component that holds the actual model and set it equal to a model in our array that has an index of head index. Once that's done, we can head back to Unity, create an empty game object called Customization Manager and add our Customize Head script to it. I'll then drag and drop the one head we have in our outliner inside the head slot. And lastly, place all the heads that are in my heads folder inside the heads array. 
Selecting the first button that features the spiked head, I'll add an on-click event, drag and drop my customization manager and call the change head function. The number I type in here will basically dictate what head my character will have when I click on the button. As I said, this button shows the spiked head. In our array, we have placed the spiked head at an index of zero, and so we will type in the number zero. We'll just do the same thing for the other buttons, simply changing the index number. So for the simple round head, we will type in one because we want our character to swap to the head of index one, which is simple and round. Then I'll type in two for the head with needles, and finally, three for the oval head. Now, if we press play and begin clicking on the buttons, you will see that indeed, we can customize our character. Lastly, I will quickly show you a way to bring our character from the menu scene to another scene. So I'll just create a game scene and then copy the camera and lights from the menu scene and paste them in the game scene. I'll then create a C-sharp script called character and I will drag and drop this script onto the character rig game object. Opening it up in mono develop, I'll begin writing some code. Now, what I'm about to write is very short, but also a little complex. So I won't be explaining it all here, that's a topic for another day. With that said, I'll create a public static variable of type character and call it instance. In my awake function, which I remind you is called before the starts function, I will check whether or not there is already an object of type character in the scene. If there isn't, then this becomes the instance and I'll ask not to destroy it when we load a new scene using the don't destroy on load function. If that condition isn't met, meaning if there already is an instance, then we will simply destroy the object. All this code is A, to make sure our character moves from scene to scene, and B, just to make sure we don't find ourselves with multiple characters in one scene. Under the update function, I'll just quickly create an if statement that checks if I press the space key. If I do, then I'll load the game scene. Remember to type in using unityengine.scenemanagement or this won't work. One last step must be taken before testing everything out. I'll go to file, build settings and make sure both my scenes are in the build settings so Unity can load them while playing the game. With that done, let's press play. So I'll change my head to the spiked one, hit space on my keyboard and as you can see, the character has moved from the menu scene to the game scene intact and functioning. All right, that's the end of the how to make a 3D character customization menu in Unity series. I had a great time making these tutorials. I really hope they were helpful to you and boosted your Maya, Unity and c -sharp knowledge. Now, the end of this series, of course, doesn't represent by far the end of game creation content on this channel. I have many exciting plans for the near and far future of Blackthorn Prod, such as continuing the indie game dev journal, participating in game jams and making behind the scene videos on games made in a weekend, a game analysis series and more. So stay tuned. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed the video. It's a huge boost to motivation. And with that, see you very soon. Cheers.